To reconcile the bank, what you do is you can go into your dashboard and if your bank is uh, here, you can click into the bank or you can go to accounting and bank accounts. And here you'd see all of the various bank accounts that you have. Now, just a few things I'd want to just highlight. Now you have two, your two amounts here. The statement balance represents the bank balance as per your bank statement. So you want to make sure that this ties back to your actual bank statement as of this date. And the balance in zero ties back to your balance sheet balance in zero. So if there's a difference, obviously we need to reconcile and understand why. We are assuming that there's either bank feeds or we've already uploaded the bank statements into zero. So I won't go through that process here. So what we'll do is we'll go into the reconciliation process now. So before we start reconciling, we can run a reconciliation report to see what the difference is between these two balances. So if I click on reconciliation report, I can see that as of the 12th of April, my balance in zero is 3432 spot 29. And my balance in, according to my bank statement, is 8315 spot 64. Now these transactions are the difference. The outstanding payments that I've recognized in zero and the unreconciled bank statement lines. Now this report can be exported in PDF and Excel. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also download the bank statements that you've uploaded or that's already been fed into Xero. So if you select a date option, you can see the date of import, reference, description, whether it's reconciled and the source. And that, that can be quite useful as well. So if you go back to the bank account, so if we're going to reconcile this business bank account, what we can see is now that the, the statement has been uploaded, you can see that there's a few things that are happening automatically. Now, this is a payment made to Smart Agency on the 12th of March. You can see that we've already marked a transaction on the 12th of March of the same amount. So what Zero has done is it's automatically matched it. If you've checked the transaction and you're sure that these two amounts are the same, you can click OK and then they're reconciled. Another thing you can do is you can create a, a transaction. So this is almost like a, a journal. Now, you can see here that there's been a transaction that's pre-populated. That's because Zero uses some machine learning to understand what you're entering and if you can use that at the same time. So here you can see quite conveniently that Zero has already pre-populated my bank fee. So if I click OK, it will post that as well. I can also, if I've got multiple bank accounts and I want to transfer, I've, I've made a transfer between my accounts without having to post the journal twice in both accounts. If I select transfer and select the account that, it, that I've made the transfer to, it will then automatically create the journal in both accounts. And then you've got like a discuss field. Now this discuss field uh, allows you to collaborate with team members. So if for example, I put on here RA, I am not sure what this is. This can then be picked up. I can then send an email out or I can just mention to my colleague that I'm not sure what this transaction is. Please can you look into it. They can look into it and then they can enter the relevant bits of information that they need to enter as well. Now, one more thing that's quite useful is you can set up bank rules as well. Now, what that means is if you give specific scenarios within Xero to spot transactions, it will automatically populate those transactions and create the journal for you. So here you can see 7-11 is a bank rule. How do I create a bank rule? I go to options, create bank rule. I'm then going to take information from that bank a transaction and create a rule. So I'm going to say every time the payee contains the word security, just copied and paste Swanston Security. I want the contact to be Swanston Security. I'm going to put in my description, let's say Swanston Security. The account code will be, let's say, cost of sales for argument's sake. I can, I'll enter the tax rate if I'm going to claim or pay VAT. 
I'm going to enter the region if that's relevant for my uh, organization. Point number five is where do you want to set the reference? So it could be at any point. So if it's by me during the bank rec. Uh, you can select which bank account you want it to be or you can get it to target all bank accounts. And then you can give it a rule. Once you click save, it's created a bank rule for me. So here you can see it's already created a journal which I just need to click OK and then it will post. Now, if I wanted to see what this rule is, I can always go to view details. And then I can see where the journal's been coded to. I can also select if I if I don't want it to code to this transaction, I can select don't apply rule and it won't enter it there.